Hey, this is Dr. Emily Scherning with AR, and I got your 2050 climate forecast for the Southwest. So just starting off, you should know that this region includes not only all of California, but also the Four Corners states and Nevada. So if you're going to look at a region that just gigantic and think you're getting more than like the 30,000 foot view, you know, let's be real here. If you want to know what's going to happen in your specific area, get in touch with me. I'll help you out. But it's worth looking at the big picture, too. The Southwest states are united in that every one of them is looking at very serious water challenges in the 2050 forecast. And so it's worth taking some time to talk about that. You know, the American Southwest writ large is a place that goes through these long-term wet and dry cycles. Way back in the day, the Four Corners region used to have some of the biggest cities in North America, but that all changed about 800 years ago. People left because of the great drought. It lasted decades. There wasn't enough water. There wasn't enough food. And so most of the people left, but some people stayed. And some of those people's descendants are there now, such as among the Hopi Nation. And as we're looking towards America 2100, there are going to be some of you now who stay, who tough it out. And let's talk a little bit about what that's going to mean. When I was reading up on all the government reports, I learned something very important that surprised me. And the important thing is that a lot of the current power infrastructure in the Southwest is going to get so much less efficient as a result of these changes to come. We're talking about 20%, 30% power losses. Some of the power stations don't generate power as well if they get too hot. And I mean, you don't have to imagine, we've seen now that the hydroelectric dams can't generate power as well, or maybe at all, depending on how, how, how low the water level gets. So if you want to make a go of things in the Southwest over the next 30 years, you and your community are going to want to focus on generating some energy independence. This is a great region for solar. Solar technology for homes and communities, is it's getting pretty good. The accessibility is going up. The cost is going down. It's more durable. It's changed a lot in the last 10 years. So if you've been skeptical, it's worth seeing what's out there now. You're going to want to get some energy stability and some energy independence. Because if you don't have power in the Southwest, you can't get cool. You know, there's a lot of places in the Southwest where it's bad for your long-term health if you can't get access to cooling. It's hot enough right now that this is a public health issue, and this heat is going to stay very intense. In Phoenix, by 2050, there's going to be about 30 days a year more where the temperature is over 100 degrees. The summers are going to get substantially longer. Now, I know a lot of people who live in the Southwest right now who they like those summers. They'd rather have that than the kind of winter I get to enjoy in the Midwest, and I can respect that. I just think it's good to have an idea of what you're going in for how much longer those hot summers are going to get, and importantly, that the winters are not going to be as cool. Very large portions of this region that used to see freezing or sub-freezing temps in the winter are no longer going to freeze. There's going to be a big increase in the winter temperatures, and that has big implications for agriculture. If you can get the water, there's a lot of interesting stuff you'd be able to grow in the southwest, but the water is a real challenge. The current drought is bad, and it's not going to end anytime soon. The current wildfires are bad, and they're not going to end anytime soon. We could easily be looking at another great drought, another drought that pushes many people out of this region. If you have a spring or a well, you can't necessarily depend on it. The groundwater is dropping. The aquifers are dropping, and that trend is going to continue. If you're on land or if you're considering investing in land in the Southwest, I'd advise you to check out and be prepared to defend your water rights. And as you're thinking about the future, assume that your water situation is going to get substantially worse. Being okay now does not mean being okay in 2050. You got to build in some wiggle room for yourself. You take care of yourself. But here's the good news. There's some bright pockets in this region, and you can get in touch with me for more info on that topic. Here's another piece of good news. This isn't happening fast. This is slow rolling, these water and power problems that are your core life-threatening problems in the Southwest. If you want to get out, if you want to move to an area with an easier outlook, you, you've got time to make this decision. You can come to the Great Lakes region. We got room here. It's nice. But I know plenty of you watching, that's not you. You love it there. You love it right where you are. And I can respect that. There's a lot of you out there, you're real tough. You want to be one of those people who come out the other side of this drought. And I can promise you there will be another side. There will be a place to come out to. If you want to be there, you got time to prepare. We have a good idea of what's coming, and you've got time to get ready. 
This is Dr. Sherning with AR signing out. Please like and subscribe. Help get the message out there. There is hope. We can prepare for what's coming. Let's get ready.